Professor Hosoya. I'm, I'm very grateful for, to be included in this session with so many excellent speakers. And I, when I first heard that I was included in this session to talk, I was so, so glad that I forgot that my flight departure here at the 6.25. So I have only three hours. So much more than usual, I have to uh, brief. Uh, in the beginning, I like to uh, talk about the possibility of war, and then I uh, present three possible scenarios of the future of North Korean crisis. And finally, I will talk a little about Japanese strategy for settling uh, this North Korean crisis. First, I like to talk that uh, a possibility of war is much higher than before since the last nuclear explosion of North Korea in uh, two months before in September. And I think that many experts agree that the likelihood becomes much, much higher and larger than before uh, because of the hardening of American stance on this issue and also because of Chinese participation to increase the pressure upon North Korea on sanctions. So that's why when I attended a conference uh, uh, a week before in Tokyo, uh, Ambassador Research Armitage uh, former Deputy uh, Secretary of State uh, mentioned that the likelihood of war is around 25%. And uh, several days before, when I visited Moscow to attend several conferences, I discussed this issue with Russian experts. As you know, uh, recently, uh, North Korean head of delegation on the Six Party Talk and uh, this kind of issue in Ministry of Foreign Affairs visited recently Moscow to discuss some issues with Russian experts and officials. And some of Russian experts there, when I talked with them, told me that the likelihood of war is much higher than 25%. And they told me that, many of them told me that, something like 50%. So uh, it would be maybe mean, uh, 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 meaningless to describe the, this kind of percentage. But uh, the, the, the only thing is that, the only thing that I we really want to focus on is that so now the likelihood is much larger. That's why Japanese Defense Secretary Minister Onodera recently uh, uh, told, commented that uh, uh, from the end of this year onward to the next year, maybe Japan will face a serious crisis in North Korea. So we have to prepare for that. And Prime Minister Abe also said that because of this reason, he hold a snap election in December last month, rather than uh, to uh, fulfill his tenure until next year, September. So uh, the likelihood is much larger. And then I like to uh, uh, describe three scenario, possible scenarios on the future of North Korean crisis. There are three possible scenarios according to my account. The first one is no war with a denuclearized North Korea. Of course, this is a goal of international community. This was decided by United Nations Security Council resolution, and also this was agreed by six-party talk, a joint declaration nearly a decade ago. But this scenario is extremely unlikely because as some of the previous speakers already mentioned in different panels, that the, the, the nuclearization strongly closely relates to the regime survival. So as long as North Korean regime likes to uh, survive, it is extremely unlikely to see the denuclearization of North Korea. The second scenario is no war with nu nuclearized North Korea. It means that North Korea maintains its nuclear weapons with ICBM or some, some other ballistic missiles. It is quite dangerous because North Korea continuously uh, try to intimidate United States as, long, uh, as well as Japan and South Korea or some other surrounding countries. So it is quite dangerous scenario because many, many smaller states would think that it would be safer or the most safest thing to have nuclear weapons to avoid American military strike. So it would be quite likely that we will see rapid proliferation spread of nuclear weapons to these smaller states. So the second scenario is quite undesirable. The third scenario is a war with nuclearized North Korea. It means that North Korea uh, 
is likely to uh, uh, attack Seoul or Tokyo, perhaps with nuclear warheads, uh, with its ballistic missiles. Of course, uh, North Korea uh, have a power to do that, and also North Korea has a clear will to destroy uh, Japan and uh, South Korea. Of course, it will be retaliated by huge amount of American military power, but uh, it is quite necessary for international community to denuclearize North Korea. So we have two quite undesirable scenarios. Uh, one is uh, a no war with nuclearized North Korea. It means a rapid spread of uh, nuclear weapons in international community. And the other one is, of course, a war. So maybe the situation is quite tensed because uh, it's quite unlikely to dream of uh, another scenario such as no war with denuclearized North Korea. So finally, I'd like to conclude my talk by uh, describing Japanese strategy for solving this difficult issue. Of course, uh, Japanese strategy is to avoid war. But at the same time, Japanese strategy is try to uh, denuclearize North Korea. Can we uh, achieve these two goals simultaneously? Quite unlikely, but uh, still we have to do that. And uh, well, maybe unlike the expectation of many people perhaps, I would like to say that Japan has been, or Prime Minister Abe has been the leading player in this game for two reasons. Prime Minister Abe is very close. He is now playing a golf with President Trump. And it's really difficult for many officials in Washington, D.C., or establishments in Washington, D.C., to influence the policymaking process of President Trump. But uh, Prime Minister Abe has some influence upon the decision-making of President Trump. That's why some officials and experts in the Washington, D.C. told me that the safest thing is to ask Prime Minister Abe to say something to Pre President Trump. So uh, he's Prime Minister Abe is quite influential. This is one thing. And uh, he is experienced. In 2002, Prime Minister Abe visited Pyongyang to meet his the father of Kim Jong-un, Kim Jong-il. And uh, since then, of course, uh, in his first administration, he knew a lot, he knows a lot about uh, the discussion in the Sixth Party tour. And that's why among the major a leader of major countries. I think that Prime Minister Abe is most experienced and most familiar of the details of the developments of the North Korean missile problem, nuclear problem. That's why I think that Japan still uh, uh, can play a very important and influential role to try to solve the issue. And finally, I'd like to say that to solve this question of difficulty, I think the Japanese strategy is to consolidate international community to put a much stronger pressure. And the key is China. So I'm really looking forward to listening to my friend Professor Jia's comment on that. Thank you very much. <laughs>